Today I'd like to talk to you about Mercury. It's a funny subject. If we were talking about arsenic, and we were talking about how toxic arsenic would be, I don't think there'd be anybody out there who would give me an argument. Everybody knows arsenic is toxic. When you start talking about mercury, though, in mercury, in, specifically mercury inside a, quote, silver filling, which is actually a mercury silver filling, you actually get arguments. You actually get people who will say, wait a minute, it can't be that bad. There's a lot of people walking around with silver fillings in their mouth. Well, is it really that bad? When a dentist puts in a silver filling, that silver filling is actually 54% mercury. It has silver in it, it has tin, it has copper, and it has zinc. In the old days, when they first started putting silver amalgam fillings in people's teeth, this is the late 1800s, it was 54% mercury, about 15% silver, a little bit of tin, copper, and zinc. The copper in those days was only 3%. Then Dr. Hal Huggins, 1973, started telling everybody that mercury actually did come off the filling. Well, the American Dental Association didn't like that very much. And they thought, well, they had to change the formula of the amalgam. So they increased the copper to 33%, with the hopes that with now more copper, you'd have less mercury coming off the filling. Just the opposite happened. With the high copper amalgams, you get 50 times more mercury coming off the filling than you did with the low copper amalgams. So anybody who has an amalgam filling placed in their mouth after 1973 has even more mercury coming off. Why is that so significant? Well, if you look at epidemiological studies, that's a real big word for meaning, look at the patterns of diseases in this country. You will see that heart disease was almost non-existent before the turn of the century. Then it began to become a problem, a very small problem, till 1973 and then it skyrocketed. Diabetes, also a very small problem, for a very small percentage of the population until 1973. Then it skyrocketed. Lou Gehrig's disease, otherwise known as ALS. Very, very small population got Lou Gehrig's disease. As a matter of fact, before Lou Gehrig, it was unheard of. Until 1973. Then it shot up. So there are a lot of things that coincidentally happen to increase as the amount of mercury coming off silver fillings also increased. I think that's more than just a coincidence and that's something that people should look into. Again, why is mercury so toxic? Because the moment a mercury molecule, one single molecule, enters into your body, it will seek out some kind of sulfur bond. We call these sulfhydryl bonds. Most of the sulfur bonds in our body are connected to proteins. Okay, so why is that so significant? Well, all of our enzymes in our body are proteins. Enzymes are just so important. Enzymes are actually more important than the protein that makes up your muscles. In order for you to have a chemical reaction in the body, and there are billions of chemical reactions that take place every minute. In order for you to have a chemical reaction in the body, in order for A plus B goes to C, in order for that to happen, you must have an enzyme. Nothing happens in the body without enzymes. Sure, A plus B goes to C could happen without an enzyme, but it would take hours, maybe even days. But with an enzyme, it happens instantaneously. Every chemical reaction in the body requires an enzyme. So if you have one molecule of mercury and it enters into the body and it attacks an enzyme, 
you are no longer having that chemical reaction take place or it's taking place so slowly that you don't need it anymore. If I need to blink my eye, I need it now. Not two or three hours from now. I need it right now. If I need my body to react and a blood vessel to dilate so that one of my cells can get oxygen, I need it now. I don't need it two or three hours from now. I need it right now. That's why mercury is so incredibly toxic. The more mercury you have in your body, the more problems you're going to have with your enzyme system. Now, if the mercury doesn't attach itself to an enzyme and actually does get to the point where it gets to the cell membrane, it's going to attach itself to the cell membrane. So why is that a problem? Well, every cell in your body has an identification code on it. If your name happens to be Thomas, the identification code is something like T-H-O-M-A-S. But now if you have mercury attached to the cell membrane, you've got T-H-O-M-A-S-H-G. H-G is the abbreviated shorthand scientific way of saying mercury. So now the body looks at T-H-O-M-A-S-H-G and recognizes that as non-self. In one of my other videos, I talked about white blood cells and how important it is for white blood cells to recognize self from non-self. That's basically what they do. Pretty nice job. You just walk around, swim around the body, look around for anything that's self or not self. If something is non-self, you flag it and you call over the next specialized white blood cell to get rid of it. That's what your white blood cells do. So, body comes along and sees your cells with your name initials on it except HG is attached to it and the body then recognizes it as non-self and proceeds to get rid of it. If you have enough of these reactions going on in the body you have something called an autoimmune disease developing where the body gets so confused it will actually start to attack cells that don't even have the HG attached to them. It just will start to attack your own muscle fibers. It will attack your own nerve fibers. And then you will be diagnosed with something like MS, multiple sclerosis, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Even some cancers are forms of autoimmune disease. Diabetes is an autoimmune disease specifically of the cell membrane. How does that happen? Mercury gets attached to the cell membrane, keeping the cell membrane from functioning. Most diabetics have plenty of sugar floating around in their blood. Their glucose levels are fine. It's that the glucose doesn't get into the cell. That's where the disease is, not in the pancreas. I'm talking about type 2 diabetes now, adult onset diabetes. The disease is at the cell membrane. The glucose cannot get into the cell properly because mercury has messed up the cell membrane. So you have two things that mercury does to the body immediately that can affect dramatically how your body functions. Mercury attacks your enzyme systems. Mercury attacks your cell membranes. There's another thing that mercury does. Every nerve tissue in the body is covered with something called the myelin sheath. Now your myelin sheath is made up mostly of cholesterol, which is why cholesterol is such an important part of our diet. Without cholesterol, we die. So every nerve fiber in the body is coated with cholesterol. You add a little bit of mercury to that nerve fiber, and that myelin sheath shrivels up, and that nerve looks like the, the legs of the Wicked Witch from the East. Remember her from The Wizard of Oz? The house landed on top of her and her legs just went brrrr, like that. That's what happens when a nerve fiber comes in contact with mercury. It destroys the myelin sheath and the nerve fiber looks like skinny little legs of the Wicked Witch of the East. Not a good thing to have. And that's why our nerves don't function as well as they do. So now we have three things that mercury does. It attacks your enzyme system. It attacks your cell membranes. It destroys the myelin sheath. What else does mercury do? As if that wasn't enough. Well, for those of you who have a lot of silver mercury fillings in your mouth, every time you swallow, like that, 
You're swallowing mercury and it's going down into your stomach. The mercury passes through the stomach into the intestines and begins to kill off the good bacteria that live with us. You know, we have billions of bacteria that live with us and they're not all bad. More than half of the bacteria that live with us are good bacteria. They produce enzymes. They produce even vitamins that, that help us to function. These bacteria are essential for us to survive. Well, mercury kills off the good bacteria and the bad bacteria actually thrive. So anybody, by definition, anybody who has mercury fillings in their mouth is going to have more parasites in their intestines, is going to have more yeast in their intestines, is going to have more of the bad bacteria in their intestines than somebody who's never had a mercury silver filling placed in their mouth. Again, we swallow the mercury, it goes into our intestines, kills off the good bacteria, allows the bad bacteria and parasites and fungi and yeast to grow even more. So what does that do? Well, that keeps you from being able to digest your food properly, keeps you from being able to, to metabolize your food properly. If you don't digest your food, you can't metabolize it. If you can't metabolize it, you can't assimilate it. In other words, it can't become you. It can't become new heart muscle. It can't become new brain tissue. It can't do any of those things. And so instead of having a brand new you every seven years that's better than the you that you had seven years ago, you will have a new, new you seven years later that's not as good as the one you had seven years ago. So that's another way that mercury attacks the way we function. Mercury also sucks up a lot of cholesterol in our body. Remember I was talking before about how important cholesterol is. Cholesterol is the foundation for all of your hormones in your body. Without cholesterol, you can't produce testosterone, estrogen, melatonin, which we need for sleeping. There's a whole slew of hormones that are produced by the body and start out as cholesterol. Well, if mercury is destroying the cholesterol in your body, you're going to have a very difficult time producing the hormones that you need to produce. Mercury also attacks the way we think. How does that happen? Well, you've got mercury fillings in your mouth. You've got mercury gas that comes off those fillings 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That mercury gas doesn't even need a transport system. It travels right through your palate, past the vomer bone, and directly into your brain. Now, the brain is a very, very fatty organ. And mercury loves to attack, again, fatty tissue, cholesterol, myelin sheath. It actually destroys the way you think. It actually changes the way you think. Dr. Hal Huggins once said that he thought that the effects of mercury and the use of mercury in our country was almost satanic because it changed the way a person thought about themselves. When we're looking at the high, high number of teenage suicides and young people committing suicide in this country, you can't help wondering if there is a satanic factor in the whole mercury issue and the continued use of mercury in medicine and dentistry. So, can you live on this planet without being exposed to mercury? I don't think so. Mercury is in the air we breathe, it's in the water we drink, it's in the food we eat. But we can control the amount of fillings that we have in our mouth placed with mercury. If the body consumes, takes in 30 micrograms of mercury per day in the air, water, and food we eat, we should be able to eliminate 30 micrograms a day. In fact, that is the amount that the body, average body is able to eliminate, 30 micrograms a day. But your average mercury filling, one side, gives off 32 micrograms per day. Actually, I think that number is a little higher. I think it's probably in the hundreds of micrograms. But the scientific literature says 32. So if you have 10 of those fillings, you're looking at three, 400 micrograms of mercury being absorbed by the body. Well, we can only get rid of 30 micrograms a day. So if you're absorbing 300 and you can only get rid of 30, then that means you're keeping 270 micrograms per day. And like I said, I think it's actually way higher than that. 
So you've got this cumulative effect of mercury being absorbed by the body and being held by the body. Very difficult to get rid of that mercury if you still have mercury fillings in your mouth. As a matter of fact, it's very hard to get rid of that mercury even after your fillings are taken out. You've got to eat well, sleep well, live basically the good life. You have to limit the amount of alcohol you consume. You have to eliminate cigarette smoking. You have to eliminate all the things that reduce the strength of our body to detoxify. And then you want to be able to at least eliminate more mercury than you take in. Again, you take in 30 micrograms a day just by breathing in, drinking water, and eating. You want to be able to get rid of a little bit more than 30 micrograms a day so that you can start to decrease the amount of body burden you have of mercury. Again, if we were talking about arsenic, there would be no argument. But now, for some reason, because we're talking about mercury, you will have people who will argue with you and tell you that it's not so bad. I tend to disagree with them. I think it is so bad, and I think this world will be a lot better off when we have no more mercury fillings being placed anywhere, not just in the upper middle class neighborhoods in the United States, but anywhere. That includes the poor neighborhoods, that includes South America, that includes China, that includes all of the third world countries. Nowhere should there be mercury being placed in people's mouths.